Welcome, in front of me is a Oppo A57s and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. So anyway, let's just get started with opening up the settings and navigating to the display and brightness where you will find the light more mode and dark mode. Now by default the device will be in light mode so you can switch it to permanent dark mode or you can utilize the auto switch which will automatically switch between each mode depending on well, sunrise to sunset or custom meaning you can set the uh, light mode to be from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. at which point it will switch to dark mode. So you can basically have both modes uh, enabled throughout the day and utilize them at the most convenient times basically now moving on to the next mode or next option it's also going to be under the display and brightness it's going to be the where is it screen color mode right here now right here we have only two options so we have vivid and natural and this basically allows you to select the saturation levels of your device so if you find that the default uh, vivid mode might be a little bit too colorful, you prefer something a little bit more balanced, you have the natural option right here. And also you have the slider right here to kind of define if you want it more on a bluer, blue side or more on a yellow side. So as you can see, you can kind of see the difference right here. Now moving on to the next option, it's going to be the personalized section in the settings right over here. And we have a couple options right here. So we can change fonts, display size as an example. So you have a couple fonts that come pre-installed like uh, Robot and Oppo Sense. Uh, you can also change the size of it. Uh, now going back, we have colors which allows you to select colors right here. So they're right now green. But you have a couple pre-made ones, so you can just flip through them, see which one you like. It gives you a nice quick little uh, visual indication on how it will affect it and you can also create a custom one so you can ch change the colors yourself though as you can see this changes all of them to the same color unlike the ones that come right here which uh, each section of like the toggles have different color so as you can see the toggles and for instance like the plus button are blue then we have uh, just accepting buttons and confirmation ones uh, green and this is, I believe, like a, for a dialer or whatever. So yeah, as you can see, they're completely different all around. But additionally, you also have the wallpaper color pick. So this defines the color based on the wallpaper that you use. And in here, it's just going to be primarily blue. Uh, but as you can see, it opts into different shades of blue. So if you have a more colorful wallpaper with more varied colors, this might work really well. Now moving on to another options right here, we have things like quick settings. This allows you to select the shape of them. Uh, so for instance, you can have something like a square if you want to. There we go. And lastly, we have icons. So this is just, uh, if you have icon packs, you can change them right here on the fly. You can change the icon size and so on. So customize it to your liking. Now moving on to the next option is going to be gesture navigation, which I have enabled already. As you can see, this is this bar at the bottom, but you can find it under the system settings and then system navigation. And here you have the two options, buttons and gestures. So if you're using buttons, you can check out the gestures. It's a pretty intuitive way of navigating through your device. And all you need to do is just swipe up to go home, swipe up and hold to go to recent and swipe from either side to go back. And just to kind of demonstrate it, that's back back recent home and like i said it's a pretty nice way of navigating now moving on to another option uh, in the system settings it's going to be the uh, general gestures so screen off gestures more precisely and they are somewhere here i think it's right here gesture and motions again system settings and screen off gestures now you do need to toggle them on by default and this will give you a bunch of different options you can utilize here, a bunch of different gestures. So for instance, we have uh, draw V to turn on flashlight on or off. So I've got it. And all you would do is just draw a V on a screen. So I'm gonna try to like block it. Come on. There we go.
So now keep in mind, uh, if you wake up the screen, this gesture will not work anymore. It only works when the screen is completely off. Now, uh, going back in here, we have uh, obviously a plethora of other options. Uh, we can draw an O to open up camera, uh, double tap to wake, uh, to wake or turn off screen. That's not the best option, considering you might be double tapping your screen quite often for different reasons. Um, music control, so we can control uh, music by drawing just different symbols like uh, the greater and uh, lesser symbols. And then below that we have way more options like, uh, again, most of them are drawings along with a slide. And as you can see, these allow you to also customize it so you can select to open up an app and you can choose a specific app that you would open in here. So let's just select one. See what would be an interesting app here. You know what, I'm just gonna pick music, whatever. So, which one was it? This one. So now, let's lock the device. As you can see, it automatically opens up music now. So there we go. And just as a last little uh, nugget right here, I'm gonna just show you how we can get back the functionality of the power button. So when you're holding it, it actually brings you back to power menu instead of Google Assistant because everybody just loves this so much. Um, so all you would do is navigate into settings and in here we have power button. It's ironic that it's called the power button and yet it doesn't act as a power button. Uh, Samsung, by removing it, they decided to change the name of it. So. I'm not sure which one I like more, the continuation of naming it the power button that doesn't function as one, or naming it side button even though everybody knows that it's a freaking power button. But anyway, and here I can have it to bring up the power menu. And now when you hold it, you get this. So to be honest, I think I prefer it, I would prefer the option uh, of the power button to be still called power button and have the power menu assigned to it. But maybe throughout the setup, just let me know I can change it if I want to. Uh, so that way it's not forcing me and it's not just all of a sudden changing the name out of the blue just because F you, because that's kind of what I feel like when Samsung does it and uh, a couple other companies. So yeah, you can get back the power mode right here, power menu uh, with a quick swap. Now, unfortunately it is only limited to the two options. So power mode or the Google Assistant and nothing else. So pick one, whichever one you want. Obviously, if you like to use power, uh, your assistant on the power button to get to the power menu, all, all you do is just hold volume up on top of it, which now will actually not work because it's disabled. But normally you just hold power and volume up and it will bring it up. Anyway, with this being said, if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.